In this illustration, we intend to simulate the frame with viscous damper and without viscous damper uh, under the earthquake loading in the Abacus software. The frame is composed of seven stories and three spans, and the height between each one of the stories is three meters. In this question, the COP earthquake is applied to the bottom of the frame and following that base shear and displacement diagrams will be drawn. In this picture you can observe the diagrams of the horizontal displacement for a frame with a viscous damper and frame without viscous damper. As you observe when we use viscous damper the quantity of displacement will be decreased. In the next picture, uh, the base shear diagram for a frame with viscous damper and frame without viscous damper has been drawn. As it can be observed, uh, when viscous damper is used, the quantity, uh, the quantity of base shear is decreased. In this picture, the diagrams of visc various a type of energy for a frame with viscous damper have been drawn. These diagrams include frictional dissipa dissipation, kinetic energy, plastic dissipation, strained energy, viscous dissipation, and external work. In this question, external work is the same earthquake energy having been drawn with brown color. The blue diagram is related to energy dissipated by viscous damper or energy absorbed by damper. As it can be observed when using viscous damper, a large part of the earthquake energy will be absorbed by viscous damper. In the next picture, we have drawn all sorts of energy for frame without viscous damper. The purple diagram is related to external work or earthquake energy, and the green diagram is related to plastic dissipation or energy dissipated by plastic strain. As you observe, when viscous damper is not used, a large part of the earthquake energy will be converted to plastic strains. In this picture, various type of energy being used in civil engineering can be observed. In this picture, the energy balance equation and the way it is calculated in the Abacus software has been displayed. And we will explain more about energy balance equation and the way it is calculated as we proceed with our training and education here. In the next picture, the way internal energy is calculated has been displayed and more explanations will be given about that in continuance. I will enter the Abacus software for simulation. I will click on create part. I intend to create a geometric shape of frame. I will select the modeling space as two-dimensional from here deformable then wire and enter approximate size equal to 100 and continue i will draw a rectangle enter its length equal to 21 meters and its width equal to 15 meters I will click on linear pattern, select this line, done. Put number on 7, enter spacing equal to 3 meters and OK. I will click on linear pattern again, select this line, done. Uh, put number on 3. Enter spacing equal to 5. And OK. 
then I will click on auto trim and delete these lines. As you observe, the height of frame is uh, 21 meters. The height uh, between each one of the stories is 3 meters. The number of stories is 7 and each span is 5 meters long. I will then click on Done. In the next step, I will enter property module, click on create material here. I want to define the properties of ST37 still. I will click on mechanical menu, then select elasticity and elastic. Young modulus of steel is equal to 210 gigapascal and Poisson ratio is equal to 0 0.3. I will click on mechanical menu, then select plasticity and plastic. Uh, from here, select Johnson Cook. Here, since we have a dynamic analysis, plastic properties should be uh, should definitely be defined. Here, you can uh, observe the properties of Johnson Cook model. I will copy this data from here and paste that in Abacus software. Here, the yield stress of steel is equal to 263 megapascal. In the next step, I will click on sub option menu, then select rate dependent. Here, select Johnson Cook. Copy these data from here and paste them in the Abacus software and OK. In the next step, I will click on General menu, then Density. Here I will enter density equal to a very small figure since, the, since in the next steps I will intend to enter the weight of structure along with the live and dead load altogether. I will click on create profile. Here I intend to create the cross section of the column. Here I will select box and continue. The size of A is equal to 0.25 meters. B is equal to 0.25 meters. And the thickness is equal to 0.02 meters. Again, I will click on create profile. Here I intend to create the cross section of the beam. Here I will select I and continue. Here we should enter the sizes of flange, web, thickness of flange and thickness of web. I will click on create section. Here uh, I will select B, I select beam. Continue. Enter the Poisson ratio equal to 0 0.3. Here select column and OK. Again, I will click on create section. Here, select beam and OK. Then I will click on assign section. Select all the columns. Done. Here, select column section and OK. In the next step, I will select all the beams. Done. And select beam section and OK. In the next step, I will click on Assign Beam Orientation. Select the whole frame, done, and press on Enter key. 
and OK. Here you can observe the beams and columns in a three-dimensional form. As you observe, the cross-section of beams is I-shaped, while the cross-section of columns is box-shaped. In the next step, I will enter Assembly Module, click on Create Instance, enter Frame into the Assembly section, and OK. I will enter Step Module, click on Create Step. Here, select Dynamic Implicit, and continue. The analysis will be done in non-linear form. Time period is equal to 25 seconds. I will increase maximum number of increments. Enter initial increment size equal to 0 0.02. And OK. In the next step, I will return to property module. Here I intend to apply the dead load, the live load, and the whole weight of the structure. To do so, I will click on Special Menu, then select Inertia and Create. Here I will select Non-Structural Mass and Continue. I will select the whole structure and Done. Here I will select Mass per Length and enter Magnitude 3, magnitude uh, 3200 kilograms per meter. Uh, actually, this figure is the uh, adding result of dead load, the live load, and the whole weight of the structure, and OK. I will go to the load module, click on uh, Create Boundary Condition. Here, select Displacement Rotation and Continue. I will select the bottom of the frame done and close all boundary conditions of displacement for it. Then here I will click on edit and release the boundary condition of U1. I click on create load. Here select gravity and continue. I will enter Earth gravity equal to negative uh, 9.81 meters per second square and OK. I will click on create boundary condition. Here select acceleration angular acceleration and continue. I will select the bottom of frame. Done. Enter the acceleration equal to 9.81 meters per second square. Click on Create Amplitude. Here I intend to define the accelerogram, accelerogram of the COP earthquake. Here select Tabula and continue. In this Excel file you can observe the accelerogram I will select uh, these two columns, copy and paste them in the Abacus software. Here I enter specify equal to 0 0.001 and OK. Here I select the amplitude and OK. In this manner, the COP earthquake will be applied to the bottom of the frame. I'll enter Mesh Module, click on Seed Part, enter Approximate Global Size equal to 0 0.4 meters and OK. Then I will click on Mesh Part and Yes. Here 
I will save the model. In the next step, I will go to the Step module, click on Tools menu, select Set and Create. I will create a set titled Base. Then select the bottom of the frame. And done. Again, I will create a set title top and continue and select this node that is above the frame. Then I will click on create history output, continue. Here I'll select set, then select set base. And here select the reaction force output directed at X and OK. Again, I will click on Create History Output, Continue. Here, select Top Set and select U1 Output. I will enter Job Module. Click on Create Job. I'll, cre I'll create a job titled without Visco Stamper. OK. And then click on Submit. The analysis was done successfully, so I will click on Result. Here you observe the deformation of the frame as a result of the earthquake. Here, you observe the equivalent plastic strain and the areas having entered the plastic section is quite clear in the picture. Here you can observe the beams and columns in three-dimensional form.
In the next step, I intend to add the viscous stampers to the frame. To do so, I will click on a special menu, then select spring dash pots, create. Then I will select connect two points and continue. Then I will select these two points, done, and enter dash pot coefficient equal to 3 million newton seconds per meter. And OK. In this manner, a diagonal viscous stamper will be created in the first story. I will do the same about the other stories. I'll select connect two points, continue. I will select these two points, done. Enter viscous stamper equal to 3 million. And OK. Then I will select these two points, done, and enter dash pot coefficient equal to 2 million newton seconds per meter. As you observe, viscous stamper will be fastened on the middle span of frame diametrically. As it can be observed, altogether seven viscous stampers have been used in this frame, having been marked out with purple color. I will enter Job Module and click on Create. The analysis was done successfully, uh, so I will click on result. Here I select the equivalent plastic strain. In the next step, we intend to compare the results obtained from the frame with viscous stamper and those gained from the frame without viscous stamper. First, I'll select the model without viscous stamper.
I'll click on Create XPy Data. Here, I'll select ODB History Output and continue. Here, I'll select the displacement on top of the frame and click on Save As. Here, you observe the displacement on top of the frame without viscous damper. Now, here I'll open the model of frame with viscous damper. Then, I will click on Create XY Data, select ODB history output and continue. Again, I will draw the diagram of displacement. Here, I'll draw both diagrams simultaneously. As you observe, the quantity of displacement of frame with viscous damper is less than that of a frame without viscous damper. The blue diagram is actually related to the frame with viscous damper, and the red diagram concerns to frame without viscous damper. Actually, viscous damper causes the quantity of displacement to decrease. I will transfer these two diagrams to the Excel software. In the next step, I will transfer the diagram of frame without viscous damper to the Excel software.
as you observe in this diagram the quantity of displacement of frame with viscous damper is less than that of a frame without this viscous damper. Actually, viscous damper causes the quantities of displacement to be decreased. In the next step, we intend uh, to draw base shear diagram for both models. First, I'll draw the uh, shear uh, uh, base shear diagram uh, for the frame with viscous stamper. To do so, I'll click on Create XY Data, select ODB History Output, and continue. I'll select All Reaction Forces, then click on Save As, and then add them all up together. Here you observe the base shear diagram for the frame with viscous stamper. Now I'll do the same for the frame without viscous stamper. I select all reaction forces, then I will add them all up together. As you observe in this diagram, base shear quantities for frame uh, with viscous damper are less than base shear quantities for frame without a viscous damper. Actually, viscous damper causes base shear quantities to be decreased. Now I will transfer uh, these two diagrams to the Excel software.
In the next step, I will transfer base shear diagram for the uh, frame without viscous damper to the Excel software. Here, the diagram for both the frame with viscous damper and the frame without viscous damper has been drawn. As it can be observed, when a viscous damper is uh, viscous damper uh, has been used, base shear quantities for the frame with viscous damper are less than base shear quantities for the frame without viscous damper. In this picture, you can observe the energy balance equation. Here, various type of energy used in civil engineering have been introduced. EKE stands for kinetic energy. ESE stands for strain energy or elastic strain energy. EPD stands for plastic dissipation or energy dissipated by plastic strain. EVD is the same viscous dissipation or energy dissipated by viscous damper or energy absorbed by the damper. EFD is frictional dissipation or energy dissipated by friction. EWK stands for external work and the adding result of kinetic energy, strain energy, plastic dissipation, viscous dissipation, frictional dissipation, and the total energy is equal to external work. In this question, external work is the same earthquake energy that is applied to the frame. In the next picture, the internal energy formula would be observed. Internal energy is actually the adding result of strain energy and plastic dissipation. Also, their relation can be observed here.
Here I'll open the frame with viscous stamper. Click on uh, create XY data here. Delete the diagram which had already been drawn. Select ODB history output and continue. Here, the diagrams uh, viscous dissipation, strain energy, plastic dissipation, total energy, kinetic energy, and frictional dissipation will be Select it and then I'll click on Save As. Here I'll draw the external work as well. And following that, draw the diagram for all the energies. The yellow diagram is related to the external work and the green diagram is related to viscous dissipation. As you observe, when viscous damper has been used, a large part of the earthquake energy has been absorbed by viscous damper. Or, in other words, a lot of earthquake energy would be wasted when exposing to viscous damper. Because the energy quantities of the viscous dampers are more or more as compared to the other type of energy. As it can be observed, uh, the other energies such as strain energy, plastic energy are very low in quantity and this indicates that a very low part of the earthquake energy has been converted into plastic and elastic energies. In the next step, we intend to survey the energy balance equation in the Abacus software in order to uh, see whether there is any energy, bal energy balance in this question. As you observe here, the adding result of the kinetic energy, strain energy, plastic dissipation, viscous dissipation, frictional dissipation, and total energy should be equal to external work. I'll click on Create XPy Data, select Operate on XPy Data, and continue. Here, as shown in this picture, I should add all the energies up together. Kinetic energy plus strain energy plus plastic dissipation plus viscous dissipation plus frictional dissipation and minus total energy. and click on save. Now the diagram which was drawn right here would be equal to external work. As you observe, both diagrams are conformed on each other. Actually, the energy balance equation holds, and the sum of kinetic energy, strain energy, plastic dissipation, viscous dissipation, frictional dissipation, and total energy is equal to external work.
as you observe here, uh, these two diagrams are quite conformed on each other in such a manner that the energy balance equation holds. In the next step, I will open the frame without viscous damper. I, uh, here, I'll delete all the energies uh, which had already been drawn. Click on Create XY Data, select ODB History Output and continue. Here, I'll redraw the energies uh, which had already been drawn in this manner. The diagrams of viscous dissipation, total energy, strain energy, kinetic energy, frictional dissipation, external work, plastic dissipation will be redrawn. Here all the diagrams will be drawn. Here the diagram having been drawn with purple color is external work or the same, the earthquake energy. And the green diagram is related to plastic dissipation. The blue diagram is related to strain energy. As you observe, a large part of the earthquake energy have been converted to plastic dissipation and strain energy. In other words, a lot of earthquake energy has been spent on the formation of structure or the plastic and elastic strains. Actually, when we don't use viscous damper, a large part of the earthquake energy will be spent on the formation of structure as well as the plastic and elastic strains. In the next step, we intend to survey the internal energy diagram in the Abacus software to see whether this energy equation is balanced or not. As previously mentioned, Internal energy is equal to strain energy plus plastic dissipation. I will click on Create XY Data, select Operate on XY Data, and continue. Here I'll add the strain energy to plastic dissipation and click on Save. In the next step, I'll draw the diagram of internal energy and click on Save As. Here, I'll draw these two diagrams. As you observe, both diagrams are quite conformed on each other. And this actually indicates that the internal energy equation holds and Internal energy is equal to strain energy plus plastic dissipation.